My name is Jonathan with Nomadic Cooling and behind me I have the brand new Nomadic Cooling S1 12 volt mini split air conditioner that may be the right air conditioner for your next adventure. Now, this has taken about a year to develop. We've gone through 10 different iterations of what we wanted to have on the air conditioner, how we wanted it to work, how we wanted to present it to the public, the fit and the finish. Um, we are getting better about making sure that the product is where we want it to be before we're actually launching the product. That's one of the nice things about this company getting larger is we have more time to develop these sorts of things. Before we get into it, let's talk about the difference between a split system and a traditional rooftop air conditioner. I wanted to develop a split system because a split system is more efficient in high temperature environments during the day. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is the evaporator doesn't heat up from the sun in the middle of the day because it's split and it's inside the environment of your vehicle. I have this in my global expedition vehicle. It was installed a year ago. I left Phoenix to drive to Colorado. It was 120 degrees, 140, even maybe even higher, hotter inside the cab when I was driving out of town and I had my dog with me. We threw the sam one of the samples in last minute because we need to be able to cool down the cab for the dog because we have the engine heat, we have the window heat, uh, and all these things just made it uh, way too hot inside of the GXV. We mounted it on the side. I this thing will freeze you out even in 120 degrees. I firmly believe that there are some advantages to a split system that we're gonna talk about right now. This is the condenser. The compressor's in here. The 12 volt fan is here. This is powder coated black. It is not painted. This will actually sit upright on the vehicle. In a Sprinter van, it would be mounted to your Molly panel or to your back door. Any sort of larger vehicle like a GXV, um, an LMTV, an F550, anything that has a box construction, you can mount it on the back or even the side of the vehicle. This does have to be mounted uh, vertically. The way that a condenser works is we need to be able to use gravity right inside here. So turning it on its side doesn't work. You, you could augment this to work on the roof of a vehicle, but that's not its intended purposes. So that's important. The other thing that we've done is we've changed uh, where the ports come out. So this is your high and low port that go to your evaporator. We have them coming out of the bottom and these can be spun to either go back into the vehicle or any direction. If you want the, uh, the high and low ports to go this way, if you want it to go back, you can change the direction of this. Uh, the 12 volt power input and the Anderson connectors that it's connected to are all high grade wire with very nice Anderson connectors, all with braided, braided wire looms. Um, same thing here on the control wire. This goes in between the condenser and the evaporator. It's all encased in wire loom as well. The important thing for this and why it's powder coated is most customers, when they attach this to a Molly panel on a Sprinter van, it will match perfectly with your bumpers, your bike racks, everything else that you have black powder coated back there. This is uh, not plastic, okay? Uh, as we go in, we have a simple uh, connector right here. We have a simple blade fuse right here. This is all going to be mounted inside of the vehicle. It comes with high and low ports as well. Now, it's, this has 10 feet of it inside the box. If you need a longer run, you can easily either get from Nomadic Cooling or from any place you can even get this uh, on Amazon and have it delivered to your door at any, any point in the future. Uh, it goes right in here to an expansion valve. And then you have uh, the internal unit right here. This gets mounted wherever you would like it inside of your vehicle. So these two things are separated from each other. The advantage of that is this will not get heated up when it's outside in 120 degree day in direct sunlight. Right up top here, you do have a, uh, a filter to filter the air. This is a low power consumption device. So right now we have our 110 to 12 volt converter set up right here. We have it to 14, we have it set right now to 14.2 volts to 
uh, demonstrate what a fully full battery, a fully charged battery lithium would look like. So we're at 14.2, it's currently at zero, not using any power. And what I would like to do is I'm going to turn the unit on. Kenny's gonna, going to keep looking at the current to see how much power it uses at startup. So I'm going to put the unit into eco mode right now. So as it powers up, let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a look and see what the power consumption is. Uh, you will hear the condenser fan starting up. You have to remember that this fan would technically be outside the vehicle. So right now at startup, you, can, you will notice that there is not a power surge. It goes all the way up to 28, and then it will cycle on and off, but because it is a variable speed compressor, that number will go high and low, and not, there is no surge that you would traditionally get from a 110 air conditioner, okay? I'm going to go ahead and turn the unit off, and I'd like you to take a look at the numbers and see how they slowly go down. So right now, just the condenser fan is running, the compressor is not running, and then it will turn off. Okay, I will turn it back on again. So right now we are at 14.2 uh, voltage, 28 current in eco mode. The current temperature inside the shop right now is about 80 degrees. So we're using 30 amps eco mode, 80 degrees inside the warehouse. We're gonna go ahead and turn this into high cool mode. Currently, Kenny, we are using 42 amps at 14.2 volts. We have it in BP mode. So currently it's coming out at 36 degrees. We've only had the unit on for two minutes. The advantage to the split system is we're not fighting the sun outside, on the roof, I should say. It's cooling the air that's already in the cab, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're going to turn it into VVS mode, maximum cooling capacity. So I'm gonna hit this one more time. We are gonna turn it into VVS mode, which is maximum cooling and maximum airflow. We will uh, wait for a second for the unit, uh, because I pressed the buttons incorrectly, will turn off and it will spin back up. So currently we are in maximum cooling, maximum airflow. And this is gonna come across very loud on camera, the condenser fan. A few things you have to remember, the fans are much louder in camera than they are in real life. You will also have to remember that this fan is outside and you can't hear this fan at all. This is a long axial fan inside here. It's the quietest fan that we have over here at Nomadic Cooling. So currently we have it pegged all the way down. We have the fan speed all the way up. We have it pegged to go to 41 degrees and coming out of the unit right now is 37, 36 degrees coming out of the unit. So you can see high cooling mode, only 43 amps, but our delta, this is over a 40 degree delta right now between the high, the temperature going into the unit and the temperature coming out of the unit. Also, once again, I can go ahead and use this in fan only mode. Okay, so that'll turn off the compressor, but you still get the fan speed as well. This unit also has a drain port for the condensate. So this will need to be drained out of the vehicle through a port of some sort. It can either go down the back of the vehicle. It just, you just need to remember that we need to use gravity. So right now, the fan Let's turn the fan all the way up. So the, com the compressor's not on currently. We're currently using two amps at 14 volts and the fan is all the way up. You can barely hear this thing. And if I take the fan down 
to its lowest level, I mean, you really can't hear this thing at all. This thing does oscillate as well, so it goes up and down. As we broaden our reach of the types of air conditioners that we uh, distribute, you'll have to take some time to think about what would look nicest on your van, what's the best use case for you, and where you're traveling in your vehicle. You know, are you going to the super hot, you know, 120 degrees, you need to work out of your vehicle all day in those extreme temperatures. You know, the split system may be the right option for you because of the low power consumption uh, and the higher cooling uh, that you will receive in the middle of the day in direct sunlight. You know, the advantage to a rooftop system is it's very easy to install. You know, it's a 14 by 14 hole on top of the roof, you pluck the air conditioner down and you're basically done. Uh, this takes a little bit more time to install because of the wires uh, and the hoses. The other thing is once you get it to your destination, you will need to get it filled. Now this uses R134A, which is the, you know, you can go to any car uh, repair facility anywhere in North America, South America, and get it charged for, uh, you know, one hour of labor. Or if you have a buddy, you can actually install this from... You can fill this with equipment from, you know, Napa. They have everything that you can borrow from there to go ahead and get this thing filled up. You just need to create suction on it, suction it, fill it, and then everything works as the way that it, that it should. If you're looking for an air conditioner that will definitely freeze you out of your rig, this is the unit for you. If you're looking for a robust application that looks great on the back of your vehicle, this may be the application for you. If you are trying to fit a price point, if you're using a 12 volt electrical system, this may be the right air conditioner for you. Furthermore, if you've already built out your rig and do not have the ability to put a new one on the roof, this can be easily installed on your vehicle after it's already been built out. If you already have a traditional 110 unit installed on your roof, and need something to add to your vehicle to give you the off-grid comfort that you so desire, this may be the right unit for you. If you'd like to learn more about this product, do me a favor, go to nomadiccooling.com or nomadicinnovations.com. If we don't have the answers that you need there, always feel free to give us a call. We're here to help to make sure that you get the right cold air technology for your vehicle and for your specific needs. guys. Let's go further in comfort with some cold air technology. Let's go.